Hey there, fellow taxpayers. Ever wonder where your hard-earned money goes after the government takes its cut? It's like a magic trick, but instead of a rabbit, your cash disappears into a bureaucratic black hole. We're diving deep into a hypothetical system where your tax dollars take a scenic route from your wallet to your city, then to your state, and finally to the feds. Think of it like a relay race, but instead of a baton, it's your money. Imagine a world where your local government, the one fixing your potholes and keeping your libraries open, has more resources directly from the people they serve. This new system is all about cutting out the middleman and giving more power and money back to the local level. So buckle up taxpayers because we're about to break down this new tax system step by step. All right, let's start with the basics. What kind of taxes are we talking about here? At the local level, it's all about those close to home services like fixing those pesky potholes. To pay for these services, cities and towns typically rely on three main types of taxes. First up, we've got local income tax. You earn a paycheck, your city takes a small percentage. Next, we've got property taxes, the bane of every homeowner's existence. Finally, we've got sales tax, the sneaky surcharge that gets tacked onto everything from groceries to that giant inflatable T-Rex costume. By collecting these taxes locally, cities have more control over their own budgets, deciding how to spend that sweet, sweet tax revenue on things their residents actually need. So, we've established that cities collect taxes, but what happens next? Do they just hoard it all like a dragon hoarding gold? Not quite. Remember that relay race analogy? Well, it's time for the cities to pass the baton, that is, your tax dollars, to the next runner, the state government. This transfer of funds usually happens through what's called revenue sharing agreements. Basically, it's like a complicated game of intergovernmental hot potato where cities send a portion of their collected taxes up to the state level. These revenue sharing agreements can get about as complicated as a Christopher Nolan movie with different formulas and percentages depending on the state. But the basic idea is to ensure that state governments have enough funding for things like statewide infrastructure projects and education initiatives. Okay, so the money's made its way from your wallet to your city and then to your state. Now what? Get ready for the final leg of our tax-funded relay race, where the states pass the baton, still your money, to the ultimate recipient, the federal government. Just like with cities sending money to states, states also have a system for transferring a portion of their revenue to Uncle Sam. This happens through a process called federal revenue sharing. It's like a financial game of telephone, except instead of whispering secrets, we're transferring billions of dollars. The federal government needs money to fund things like national defense, social security, and of course, those sweet, sweet government salaries. Uh, okay, I'll stop now. We've covered the what of this new tax system, but what about the how, implementing a system where taxes flow from individuals to cities, then states? And finally, the federal government is a massive undertaking. Think of it like building a tax freeway, complete with on-ramps, off-ramps, and probably a few potholes along the way. First and foremost, we'd need a rock-solid legal framework. This means crafting new laws and amending existing ones to accommodate this multi-tiered tax system. Next, we'd need to build a robust administrative infrastructure to handle this new tax-collecting behemoth. We're talking about new government agencies, armies of tax collectors, and enough paperwork to make your head spin. But hey, at least it'll create jobs, right? So we've built our tax freeway, but is it actually an improvement over the existing system? Well, like any good infrastructure project, there are pros and cons to consider. On the plus side, this system could lead to improved resource allocation. By giving local governments more control over their own budgets, they can better tailor spending to the specific needs of their communities. Additionally, this system could enhance accountability. When taxpayers see a direct link between the taxes they pay and the services they receive, it can increase trust in government. However, this system isn't without its challenges. Implementing such a complex system would be a logistical nightmare, requiring significant coordination between different levels of government. And as with any system involving money and government, there's always the potential for waste, fraud and abuse.